welcome back to this American Ride podcast where we talk about issues that affect you, the average American. What's up? Welcome back to the show. Um, we have an exciting one now today, actually, a little off topic from what we've been the the drum that we've been beating for the past couple of episodes, I would say. But uh, I'm George. I'm here with Bert, and today we are here with Brian from Operation Canine Beethoven. Thanks for having me, guys. How are you doing? So op- Operation Canine Beethoven, man, you guys helping veterans one paw at a time. I, lo- I love it. That's the goal. I love That's it. Goal. So providing uh, therapy dogs and psychiatric service dogs um, specifically. Psychiatric service dogs specifically mm-hmm. too. Our veterans who suffer from PTSD, depression, and anxiety or just need that emotional help. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, and listen, a dog can mean a lot. It sure can. A, a dog a dog can mean a lot. I have uh, it's we we love our dog. We've always had dogs and you know, even if we go away, my mom lives here with us, if she's uh, she would much rather have the dog here with her. <laughs> Even if he's in another room, she 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 likes knowing that he's here. You know, that's some kind of like sense of calm mm-hmm. that that animals bring out. You know, so Operation Canine Beethoven, a um, couple of things. Quick introduction: based here in New Jersey, yes, Promise in the Garden Jersey. State, and um, we discovered each other uh, when with our Tunnel to Towers event coming up here on July thirteenth. Yeah, so it's uh, you know all all by chance. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, had messages out there on the internet for looking for vendors and things like that, and they reached. I think was it was it Maureen? Yeah, it was Maureen, our director of operations yeah. and social media queen, like I like to say about her. And she searches stuff all over the place, and she comes up with a bunch of stuff, and she'll send it my way, Arpy's way, and we're like, oh, okay, let's do it. You know, yeah, she reached out and said, uh, you know, explained what they had and said they'd love to to be a vendor at the event, and so we got all set up with that. And then she reached out again and and said, you know that you know, they might be interested in coming on the podcast or, or alive for baggers and brews or whatever, and just getting their message out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. It's a, listen, social media is a, is a way to spread the word that, uh, you know, a way that we've never had before, mm-hmm. you know, to, to spread word and, and bring awareness. I'm, I'm not even sure, you know, how we brought awareness to issues such as, you know, PT, PTSD in the past. I mean, that's probably why it was never, you know, I, yeah. I, I wonder how much social media can actually be attributed to, Bringing it's not awareness. much. It's not much. Yeah. You know, it should be out there um, because our veterans have done so much for us. You know, absolutely. So my father was a veteran. Uh, you know, I just want to be able to help people, and that's the common goal is to help people. Right. You yeah. Um, if you're able to help one, or if you're able to help hundreds, you did something. Yeah. Right? And so that's what it all is about. Is Operation Canine Beethoven is just helping people, helping our veterans one point at a time, like I like to say. And, uh, you know, get these dogs, we rescue them from, you know, euthanasia off the streets, kill shelters. We bring them back to health. Uh, we check their temperament to make sure it's a good temperament. And that's our goal that our veterans will apply at our website. There is a process, just like if you're rescuing a dog from a rescue, there's a process Mm -hmm. and there's information that has to be given. Uh, and then it's our goal to, you know, get these dogs trained to become psychiatric service dogs. And so they can go to their forever veteran and live a beautiful, happy, wonderful life. So, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff there. Um, and I kind of want to start, we, we really, I think for people to understand, you know, the inspiration behind this and, and more importantly to be, you know, inspired by what you guys are doing um, because, you know, life is busy. Like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> life is busy. This it is, sure is. <laughs> you know, Lately, anyway. <laughs> it's um, for people who do things that, you know, volunteer and above and beyond. Uh, why don't you tell us how it started and um, what, what inspired you to, to get this going? So, you know, my father was a three time Purple Heart uh, Vietnam veteran, um, served his country, loved serving his country. And then about January of 2020, uh, at that time, my father was at a, a Paramus Veterans Home in Paramus, New Jersey. And so at that time, we were getting ready to sell the house that I grew up in. And uh, so we had a bunch of kennels that we wanted to donate, you know, um, and give it to somebody who can, who can use it. And so my brother reached out to this woman uh, named Rose, and then Rose reached out to this gentleman named Sam. Sam then reached out to Arpy. And so my brother says to me, hey, this gentleman's going to come by on Saturday and he's going to pick up the kennels. Can you make it? And I said, sure. 
So I went over to the house and hanging out. And all of a sudden I see this truck pull up and it says K9 Beethoven on it. And he and I struck up a conversation and we spoke about what he does. And, <clears throat> and he takes uh, Beethoven to the uh, Actors Guild nursing home in uh, Ramos. I'm sorry, Hackensack. And then I was telling him, you know, after 40 years of, of memories and this and that, my mother's a little upset, doesn't know what the future is going to hold, uh, going through a lot, stressed. We're selling the house. We've had dogs our whole life. And he was explaining to me about that Beethoven is a therapy dog. And he does certain things, goes to certain schools, certain places, and he brings Beethoven. And I said, well, would you mind bringing Beethoven into the house? I said, my mother loves dogs. And he did that. And you can see the instant change of my mother's face going from sad, depressed, to happy. And Beethoven just sat at her feet and my mother just was petting him, hanging out. No words had to be said. And I just watched and it was amazing. Now, I always knew that dogs do amazing things. We all know that. Right? But once you see it, that's when you realize how special these animals, these creatures are, right? And he and I became friends. And we were just talking a few times in a row. And I said, hey, my dad's in the Paramus Veterans Home. And he says, well, when I get in there, I will make you a promise, handshake agreement that Beethoven will be, your father will be the first person that Beethoven meets. Because he had to go through a process. At the time, it was an upper respiratory infection going on. Uh, so he couldn't get in. And then in February uh, of that year, he says, I'm, I'm here. Where's your father located? What room? What floor? What unit? And so he says, I'm going to go in and I'm going to meet your father. I keep him my promise, bro. I said, thank you. So I called my father and I said, I'm going to have a special visit today. And my father goes, oh, you? I said, no. He says, cousins? I said, no. About an hour later, I called my father up. I said, how was your visit? He goes, it was the best wake-up call I ever got. And then Arpy and I just forged a friendship. And from there, we were like thinking, All right, what can we do to help? you know, our veterans. And a lot of the times those women and, and men that are in these nursing homes, everybody remembers them around the holidays, but no one really remembers them if it's not the holiday season. So what we did was we uh, partnered up with Birkin County, Harley Davidson in Rochelle Park. Uh, and they were one of our first big supporters uh, in doing what we wanted to do. And so we did a drive, you know, uh, men's socks, diabetic socks, hygiene products. And so we were putting them in all different places throughout Bergen County. And then it just snowballed. It just literally, it became Operation Canine Beethoven, helping the veterans one point at a time. And um, we just started from there. And it's, we are where we are now, helping wow. our veterans, helping yeah. anybody really that matter, even first responders too. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just about helping people and, and, and not only just helping the veteran or the first responder, but it's also helping these dogs. I mean, these dogs are being, you know, uh, euthanized. And so we want to basically try to save both lives. Right. So that's how we really just started. Mic adjustment. <laughs> All good. We can edit that out, right? Eh. <laughs> Whatever. It's natural. <laughs> it's natural. It's natural. Listen, I watch some big uh, podcasters on YouTube and they're always stopping in the middle and be like, could you get closer to that mic? Can you like just <laughs> yeah. get personal there with the mics? Yeah, get it is what it is. Get up in there. Um, but uh, yeah, so the first visit happened and uh, my father loved it. And it just that we started to go to like hospitals, rehab centers, other veterans homes. And that's how it all began. That's awesome. That is so cool. And it, it's great that you partnered with um, Berg and Harley. Yeah. Uh, very nice owners. Very nice. Um, definitely community involved. They are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they do a lot of activities with the motorcycle yeah. community up there. They do a lot in the, you know, New Rochelle community there and, uh, or Rochelle Park community rather. And um, I bought a bike off those guys. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I tell you, like you said, the owners are amazing. Liz is amazing. Like we just mm -hmm. recently, a couple of weeks ago, did a uh, bikini bike wash. Yeah. I saw that. So, yeah. So for the last couple of years, they do this every year in June. Mm hmm. You know, Father's Day weekend, and uh, it's ten dollars to get your bike washed. You get two tickets for a hot dog, and all the proceeds go back to us, which is amazing. And then we're able to sell our merchandise as well. 
That's I saw, I saw that on Instagram and, and I instantly thought, man, I need to call this guy and tell him he needs to do a bikini bike wash at our event. <laughs> and I was like, crap, we're like in a field. There's no, there's no concrete. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, they do it every year and it, it's great. You know, they're very big supporter of us. Anything we've ever needed. They've always been there for us. Awesome. It's great. Yeah. It's great. And being, being Bergen County based. I mean, it's, um, I mean, it, Bergen County is as big of a community as it is. Um, one of the probably most populated suburbs. It's probably one of the most populated suburbs in the country. Yeah. Um, cause I don't want to call it a city cause it's, it's not a city yet, <laughs> but, <laughs> but at some point soon it may well be. Um, and, uh, there's, there's a lot of great businesses up there and, and a lot of, um, people who've been in that community for a very, very, yeah. very long time. And they're very giving too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing fundraising, not just, because of Operation Canine Beethoven, but over the years, I've done a lot of fundraising for a lot of other organizations within Bergen County and even Hudson County, Bayonne. And so, you know, Hudson County, Bergen County people, they're very giving. Yeah. You come in and you explain to them what you're doing, what your purpose is, what your mission is, and they love it. I mean, who doesn't love veterans and dogs? Mm, yeah. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing that I think, I didn't necessarily realize about um, Operation Beethoven when, you know, I first kind of like picked it up and looked at it is you guys aren't only saving veterans, you're saving dogs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is dogs that you guys are rescuing from shelters. Um, kill shelters. Kill shelters. The streets, and and reha Asia. rehabbing them. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's donation money. It's it's not cheap no. to... Um, you know, to get a dog from a shelter and make sure they're, you know, they might need to be spayed. They might need to be, if they weren't already, or usually paying for that from the shelter because the shelter mm -hmm. so politely spays their animals and then charges you for it when you adopt them. Yeah. I mean, and, and we're lucky because we've partnered up with uh, Bergen County Animal Shelter mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> along with this other organization called the New Jersey Veterans Network, which they do amazing things as well. And so we partnered up with them along um, with their uh, coordinator, Doc. And so we partnered up with them. And so now we're growing and that's all we want to do is keep on growing and growing and growing and try to help as many veterans and people that we can, yeah, you know, help. I mean, that's like, I, I like to say, I just want to help people. Yeah. That's it. If, 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 if everybody in this world can just want to help people, it probably mm. would be a better world. It would, it would have no <laughs> doubt. You no know, doubt. like imagine that. Most people want to help people. They want to help themselves. <laughs> they want to yeah. help themselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a lot of veteran communities up there too. I mean, I remember um, just riding around Fairlawn and, and Fairlawn was one of those towns where people hung the stars in their windows. Yeah. And there was a house. I don't forget this house. I think, I think, I think the house was yellow, but it was real close. It was like your typical fair, uh, Fairlawn kind of old craftsman. Um, and it was right by the high school and they had three flags in the window. Wow. I said, good Lord. Good Lord, they got three flags in the window. Yeah. American flags? No, the the uh, star, it's the white and the red that shows you have a member in service. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you would see you would see a lot of those around town. Very, very patriotic. It is a patriotic town. Very. P people don't realize our Memorial Day parade and my house was like on ground zero for the Memorial Day parade. We were on Berdan. So everybody, you know, we did three meals. We were there all day. We partied all day. Yeah. But the Memorial Day Parade was, it, it was miles long. Same thing with Saddleburg. I mean, Saddleburg, mm -hmm. Saddleburg the same way. I mean, they got the, they got the, um, uh, the flags that are on all the uh, light poles mm -hmm. that those who have served. I think yeah. every single town in New Jersey, city, every single one of them should have that. Agreed. Because there's yeah. definitely... Veterans live in there yeah. or those who have, are no longer with us. Yeah. yeah. And there are towns that don't do that. Oh, lots. It's like. My oh. wife's, my wife's grandfather was just uh, put up in uh, Lyndhurst. Every right single By five town. points in Lyndhurst, they had his flag put up. So it was a very cool thing. We need to go up there and see it. It was just put up like maybe a week ago. It's cool. I mean, so it's, it's, it's cool. Not every town does it. Vincent town does it, which is great. Yeah. And they've had a, a Memorial Day parade for. For a long time. A long time running. Yeah. So that's cool. Nice to be in a town that does it. But yeah, you're right. There's way too many that don't, and they should all be doing that. I feel like when we, I mean, the town we grew up in, there was the Memorial Day Parade. 
there might have been in Pemberton. Oh, ours? Like, up in the mm. town, like in, in front. I we, don't remember anything. Which is crazy because we were a military town. Yeah. we were. You, so you would think, like, we were a military <laughs> town, but because um, we both grew up just outside of Fort Dix McGuire. Okay. A little, little town called Browns Mills that was there. And that was, it was a base town. Mm-hmm. And ne- we never had anything like that. And I, That's shocking. I don't the, remember it. There but, might have been something up in the borough, I maybe. feel like. Borough, borough might have, but they're yeah, kind of they're, they're different town. separate. Yeah, you know, that's shocking to me because yeah. you said right by Fort Dix, and yeah. isn't there another military base here too as well? Well, it's uh, Joint Base McGuire Dix Lake. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah, back back then, signs. back then they were all separate. Now they've joined okay. as mm-hmm. Joint Base, but so back then it was on my way up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. back then it was Fort Dix, it was McGuire, and then there was Lakehurst Naval Base, but now yeah. it's all one. But yeah, being the town, right? You know. Every base has those towns right next to them, and usually they're loaded with people that work on the base or mm-hmm. retired from the base. And to not have something like that is a little bit weird. Yeah, that's strange. That's when we moved the fair line. It was like everybody was excited that we were on this like parade route, and I was like, "Well, it's a parade. Like, how long could it be?" But they they take their they take their Memorial Day very seriously up there. So does yeah. So does Saddleburg, mm-hmm. like I was saying. Man, yeah, that thing is long. It's great. I mean, yeah. we get up on a float with the dogs. I mean, it's 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 a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. You guys do a float there. Yeah, we got a little float. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So with the dogs, you guys, your operation, K9 Beethoven, they do all the training? So, yeah. So we work with several rescues. And then um, from there, we have our own trainers. We have Sam. He's upstate New York. Uh, then we have um, our head uh, behavior special and uh, trainer. His name is Chris. Uh, and then we have a, like, a few other trainers just in case if they can't do it, we have some backups, okay. you know, so they do the training and uh, the rescues will call us and let us know, just like bringing back up Bergen County Harley. There was a gentleman who reached out to us uh, a couple of years back and uh, he says, I heard about you guys just being down at Bergen County Harley. And so we were able to rescue a dog and that dog was literally 20 minutes away from being euthanized. So the dog mm. didn't have a name. So we named it Miracle. So this gentleman met the dog, trained the dog, and he came to us and said, look, I, I like the name, but I found you guys at Harley Davidson in Bergen County in Rochelle Park. And he goes, can I name it Harley? So how can you say no? Mm. <laughs> and he's also, believe it or not, he's a, an employee of Tunnels for Towers. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool connection. So I did send him the flyer. Nice. You know, um, so I don't know if he'll, he'll come or not. Very nice. I, I was telling him about it. But he obviously uh, rides if he was at Bergen Harley. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and he take and he takes Harley to to work all the wow. time. All the time. That is awesome. Out, that is in, cool. Staten, out in Staten Island. You know. And so yeah. So we, we we train the dogs, and like I said, we work with several trainers because their their schedule is as crazy as everybody else's. You know, and if they don't have the room. And we have to figure out where the dog is going to go. Yeah. And the training takes about like four to five weeks, six weeks. Okay. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. The, the timeline on that. That's yeah, it, huh? Give it, I six mean, weeks. give or take. I mean, you know, the process starts with the veteran obviously filling out the application. We get it, we review it. And then from there, there's a phone interview. And then after the phone interview, there is a house inspection. Now, if it's too far, we'll just have them, you know, snap some video, some pictures. Um, you know, common areas, we don't take, you know, pictures of anything like their bedrooms or private area. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we want to see how the house looks, you know, I mean, there has been times where we're like, no, because the house where they lived wasn't safe. So we're not going to put a, an animal in that position. Right. So we, you know, and then once the dog is trained, it's like about a 30 day, you know, trial period to make sure that the dog is getting along with the owner and the owner is getting along with the dog and the mm-hmm. owner is able to keep it up, you know? And, um, and that's after the 30 days, the dog becomes their, their animal. Mm. What is, um, I, the training is actually a lot quicker than I thought. I thought so too. I thought yeah. it'd be a lot longer than that. I mean, there's been situations where it's been longer. It depends on the dog. Yeah. Is there, what, what is like that? Is it, is it expensive? Is there like a, so everything Monetary. from start to finish, it's about seven thousand dollars. Say every day? No, seven, no, no, seven thousand from okay. from getting the dog from the applicant. Let's just say he's you know. So from the veteran bills, the training, 
So okay. it's a sponsor of Full Dog from start to finish is seven thousand okay. dollars. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Not cheap, not crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've heard other places that are a lot more money. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, I mean a lot of the times, you know, these rescues that we work with, they're so good. So they're they're giving us discounts too. You know, or some rescues may say, you know what, it's gonna go to a veteran, you know, and you don't owe us anything. You know, get us a t shirt. Okay. You know, like you know, yeah. something like that. You yeah. know, so it's we've been lucky as far as that's concerned, you know, because they we were five oh three C not for profit. So all the money that we make goes right back to the program, merchandise sales. Uh, donations <clears throat> goes right back to our program. We at Operation Canine Beethoven, we work for free. We don't take a dime. Okay. I mean, we're, we're all volunteers. Wow. So, yeah. You know, it's a lot of Ooh. long weekends and yeah. you know, traveling here. You guys did an event yesterday in Bayonne. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did and, really well. Uh, and yeah, East of San Vito. It was really, it was, a, it was a good. I so happened to be on that planning committee for the feast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hey, can I get a table? And they're like, sure. You know, so. I didn't have to pay the vending fee. What was in the feast? Well, oh. oh, oh, hang on. <laughs> South Jersey here. Yeah. yeah. South Jersey, not Italian. We don't have, we don't have feasts. <laughs> what do you have? Festivals? No, we, we don't have any of that stuff. Really? Yeah. So th- this is. We have farm fairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fairs. Yeah. yeah. Not the same. Not the <laughs> same. Not the same. <laughs> no, I mean, we had, you know, we had a bunch of vendors setting up along fifth street between mm-hmm. Avenue C and, and, and Broadway. And then we had in the parking lot of the church, Trinity parish, uh, we had um, all the food trucks, sausage and peppers, empanada lady. I mean, we've had, you know, obviously ice cream truck. So we've had, you know, all these different kinds of foods and stuff like that. And then on the main street was where your vendors were, the stage, the beer garden and a mm-hmm. wine garden, which mm-hmm. was great. Uh, and then I set my table up right next to the stage. Perfect. It's um, Zeppelis, of course. Zeppelis. <laughs> a feast are a good time. Um, they're usually, you know, around some type of a religious holiday. Yeah, yeah. Um, my first experience with a feast was San Gennaro huh. in the city, yeah. and um, you know they're bringing bringing down the statue, and everybody's like, you know, pinning the statue to pinning dollars to the yeah. to the statue, and and uh, you know because it's San Gennaro, nobody got carded. You could drink it like 18, like nobody cared. You're walking around Whoa. the streets with beers, like nobody, like no, San Gennaro had no rules back then. And I know it has since changed. I remember my first was Hoboken, <laughs> when they used to do a Hoboken one. Well, there were two in Hoboken, though. Yeah, I mean, I remember my parents taking me all the time, you know, it was great, you know. So. We would see Johnny Maestro on the Brooklyn Bridge perform. Yeah. And it was great. Oh man, my my parents my parents are big fans of Johnny Maestro and the Brooklyn Bridge. Of course, they would what? always have like a, you know, Frank Sinatra impersonator, mm-hmm. you know, in Hoboken and I love going to festivals and feasts. And so I was right yeah. up my alley. It's today, feast. You know? And a feast, that's a great way to bring awareness because people are, you're, you're hitting people from, I would say probably 90% from the community the feast is in. Oh yeah. 90%. And, and this is our first one that we've done in Bayonne in, in a very long time because I used to have one years ago Yeah, at Assumption. And so that school and that church closed down. And I remember when I moved into Bayonne at like 07, 08, I went to this thing. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. They got, you can gamble with the little wheel and they had a bar <laughs> and all this food. I was like, this is amazing. You know? So I was approached uh, for what I do for a living, what I, my real job, mm-hmm. uh, not to saying that this is not a real job, but, but uh, my real job. The one that pays. Yeah. The one that pays, right? <laughs> this one pays in just seeing the warm feelings and the warm feelings. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And the happy tears as I like to call them. But, um, so I was approached, uh, you know, to see if we can put this thing on and we got together with a bunch of people and we got a committee together and, you know, the community came together, the Ro- the Rotary Club of Bayonne came up together and we got it going and it was a good success. You know? Nice. Sounds fun. A yeah. lot of, it was a lot of fun yesterday. Look yep. forward to it next year. Bayonne was a, Bayonne's a cool city for those who don't know. It's like this city that's kind of sandwiched between like New York and Newark, Staten um, Island, Staten Island, yeah, Jersey City. yeah. It, it's like it's this, you know, it's 14C off the Turnpike, and um, like we were talking about before, I spent a lot of my summers there. Uh, Bayonne, just talking about like patriotic towns and yeah. cities and stuff. Bayonne is full of veterans, full of veterans, full of, full veterans. of patriotism. I mean, listen, I, I we've they've the city of Bayonne and these organizations, especially the Rotary Club. 
they've been so good to Operation Canada Daytona. Like it's 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 crazy. It's yeah. you know a lot of these bands that are from Bayonne, they've done fundraisers for us, and they're just they're all up on it, and they love the mission and the purpose, and it's just it's an amazing thing. It's interesting. One of one of my one of my early uh, experiences with veterans. Obviously, my grandfather. He was a you know World War Two. Um, he was World War Two vet, but we talked about chippies, and they didn't have. I don't know if there wasn't a VFW or these guys didn't go to a VFW back then or, or what the what the story would have been probably like in the early eighties, but um, it was all World War Two vets at this bar named Chippies. And that was like the first time I, I, the first time in me being a small kid, like hearing these guys talk about World War II and, you know, telling the stories about, you know, building bridges at night mm -hmm. to get across the Rhine and, you know, under like basically blind fire because there was no night vision back then. You yeah. know, they were just kind of shooting at the sound, the Germans. And, but they would build the bridge and they'd probably get as many, as much as they could across at night because as soon as daytime came, the German spotters would zero in and just blow the bridge with the artillery so they knew to like to get away but like here and was like one of the stories that like just kind of stuck out and you know in my head but hearing these guys you know they they on them was full of vets yeah man they have a lot of vfws they got a lot of catholic war veteran you know, association i remember the catholic war yeah and um <clears throat> lions clubs it's just it it's great it's, yeah you know i mean it's you know i go into those places once in a while you know i'm a member of the auxiliary in Saddlebrook post 3484. And, um, you know, that's more of like a younger crowd, mm -hmm. you know, where the Bayonne is still the older crowd, which yeah. is great, you know, just to sit there and talk to them. And like I was meeting people yesterday uh, that I've never met before. Love what we do. And they would talk about their experiences in the military, you know, in the sixties and stuff like that. And, you know, just hearing that reminds me of the stories that my father used to tell me. Yeah. You know, my grandfather was Normandy Navy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was just great to, I love talking to that older generation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing when they open up. So tell us what, is, I think everybody has their, their notion of what a, what a therapy dog is. What is. So a psychiatric a, service dog, they mm -hmm. get trained in, in uh, uh, commands blocking um, where the, the therapy dog side of it, they get trained in like good leash manners, manners uh, so they can go to like hospitals and rehabs and, and be with the people. Uh, so there is a difference. The difference is, is where the psychiatric service dog is being trained in one or two extra things. And those dogs can go anywhere. They can go to restaurants, hotels, on a plane. Uh, they have rights to go to supermarkets. They can go anywhere. Uh, where the therapy dogs, they're kind of limited, but, uh, you know, their temperament has to be also as good as a psychiatric service dog because they're going in crowds. They're going to like hospitals, like I said, rehab centers. So they're, you know, we do a lot with our therapy program in those situations as well as like, we'll go to like Boy Scouts, Girl Scout troops so they can get their animal badge and just teach them the importance of dog safety, how to approach a dog. Uh, so, and I, and I get to see it. I mean, we've been to a bunch of hospitals and rehab centers, Lions, you know, the, the veterans home yeah, in Lions, New Jersey, the hospital. <clears throat> they don't remember our names. If we haven't been there for months and they see Beethoven or they see Duffy or they see any of our therapy dog program dogs walk in, they just, they melt. They get to their knees and they just hang out and they hug the dog, they pet the dog. And it's just an amazing sight to see. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, like I said, we, the dogs are the stars. We're just the ones that are able to verbally put out our mission and our purpose, and helping anyone who can we can possibly help. Yeah, in a nutshell. Hmm. It's cool. Yeah. Do you know how many dogs you guys have trained and matched with? Uh, so far, we've done twenty dogs to twenty veterans. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And that's that's since twenty twenty. Twenty twenty one. Okay. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Wow. That's, so I mean, it's not a lot, but it's, it's a decent number. Listen, it's, it's it's a pro it's a process. It's, yeah, it's, it's a process. All right. It's, you know, it's not, and, not a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's and it's made the difference. You know, I mean, we're working on. Um, we've had uh, two veterans who just applied, so we're in that process of getting their information. And you know, a lot of the times is that we will not place a dog 
into a home that already has an animal. Okay. Because it just won't work. Right. Like it, it, we've tried it. We learned our lesson and we've moved on. It's just tough because that dog is being trained where the other dog is not. Right. And there has been situations depending on the, each situation is different, right? Just in anything in life. And so what we've done is that there's been times where a veteran has reached out to us and said, I have a dog. This is the kind of dog I have. This is the age. Could we train my dog? Right. And so we've kind of went into, you know, dipped in that side of the pool. And and so depending on the situation, every situation is different. Uh, and so we've done that too. So they've had that dog for a little while. Yeah. They want it to be trained in leash manners or they want it to just to be trained and we'll try to help them out. And, and we pay for that too. Okay. So it's like, it's not, no money comes out of their pockets whatsoever. Like that's zero. That's a great fit. I, I mean, that's not something I, I got from looking things up either, but I mean, that is, um, it, it, it is a great fit and it's, you know, from a economic standpoint, a, a much more reasonable way for an organization to do things because then you have your training costs, but you don't have the adoption and a lot of the other stuff that, that goes along with it. So we had a gentleman who called us about two years or so and he says, uh, I want a dog, but I want a boxer. Ooh. And uh, Picky. <laughs> we responded back and we said, we can't guarantee that. Mm-mm. We we rescue what we can rescue. We train our dogs and we can't, we're not going to go in that side of the business where someone says, I prefer to have. The, yeah. It, it's tough, you know, um, especially with rescues, right? Yeah. So he simply said, uh, if you can't find a boxer, well, I'll just go out and buy one. And then I'll go to a boxer rescue and then I'll have it trained by you guys. So then Arpy calls me, he tells me, so Arpy picks up the phone and calls a rescue that he knew of. And the woman said, well, yeah, I, I have boxers, but I don't know if I can get one right away because I have a list. So then Arpy then explains more into detail about who we are and what we do. This is on a Friday, let's say. Monday, she calls him back, says, I love what you do. I reached out. I looked at your social media pages, your YouTube, the whole nine. I'm kind of going to bump you up the list a little bit. I got a dog for you, and it's a boxer. So so we called the guy back, and he fell in love with Sophie. His wife fell in love with Sophie. We got the dog trained. I was able to drive the dog down to where he lives hung out with the dog in the car for the about two hours. And it's been great ever since. He's become a, a big supporter of us. He does some like volunteer work for us. Um, and, you know, he works, you know, for the government and he brings his dog to work and he goes to like all certain like events when he can. And so he's been a, you know, a huge asset because a lot of these veterans, they don't, they don't want the whole pop in circumstance. You know, they don't want to, have the whole crowd, you know, right. Yeah. Cheering them on. Yay. Good job. You got a dog. Yeah. And so a lot of the times we'll just highlight the dog, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's why we're, we're, I'm really big on HIPAA. Like I have a sheet, a form that it says a photo consent. If you don't want to be on our social media, that's fine. Like, you know, we're, we're cool with that. I get it. You don't want to be out and about people saying, oh, he's got this psychiatric service dog. So, you know, so a lot of them are shy and some of them just can't do it because they're afraid of crowds. And so luckily about a couple of weeks back, we gave a dog to a guy in Bayonne, older generation, older guy. And he was okay with, you know, being introduced and this, that, and the other thing. He just said, I don't want to speak. I said, oh, that's fine. Mm but he was able to sustain and be able to be, you know, seen by a bunch of people, you know? And uh, so it's, we try to, now we've gotten to the point where we want to try to see if we can get the dog they want. Mm -hmm. But in the very beginning of operation canine Beethoven, we kind of were like, no, we can't do that. We're rescuing these dogs. We're just going to, let's just see what we get. Yeah. Yeah. So what type, is there a type of dog that kind of That's, lends itself? Is that your next question? Was, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to the training? Because, I mean, I've had a couple of different dogs over the years. Uh, I mean, I had a blue tick beagle. There was no way she was ever going to be a therapy dog. Like, uh, you know, 
my the trainers say every dog is trainable. Mm. I can train the dog. Okay. The problem is it's the owner keeping up with the trainer. The mm. dog is trainable. Okay. Not all human beings are trainable mm. to be to keep that dog. So, uh, you know, I'm, obviously you got your German shepherds that are amazing. Yeah. You know? Your golden retrievers that can be trained. I mean, they're they're just known to be. There are there are breeds out there that are known to be Good able, therapy. yeah, to be trained. Are there ones that are known to be harder to train? I'm sure there is. We haven't come across okay. that. I mean, I would think that there are some dogs that are out there, like you said. I mean, there's just some that are. Just I can't feel do like it. sight hounds. You know, who when they you know like like greyhounds. Yeah. Even though they're lazy, you know they have that. You know. When they're sight hunters, like they say have, they're lazy, they are they are lazy dogs actually. But but they're they're sight dogs, and when they see something, like they got to go get it. It's reactive. Yeah. It's it's an it's an instinctual thing, and and I wonder, you know, I guess my question is like, can you take a dog that's like a like a Weimariner or something like that that's you know a hunting dog by? I don't think so. Yeah. In my opinion, I, yeah. I don't think so. But the trainer could probably tell you differently. Yeah. And obviously that's, that's the business that they're in. So they're going to want to be able to, yeah. oh, I can train every single dog. And, and some dogs are probably not trainable. Yeah. It's, it, it's just the nature of the beast. You yeah. know? Well, I had one not trainable and then, and then I got, you know, well, you see Hank. I mean, Hank yeah. is. Hank's a good boy. <laughs> not trainable. Is that what you're talking about? He's perfectly, he's perfectly trainable. He's, he's yeah. perfectly trainable. He's, when are you going to start that? He's good, man. How old is he? You said you, you're not sure. Uh, we think he's like five or six, yeah. but. I mean, obviously I, I would think. As the dog gets older, it might be a little harder mm-hmm. to train. Um, you know, you don't we don't train the dog right away when it's like you know a year or two in. They got to be a little older, you know, and then they'll start. So, to so you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I guess not. <laughs> so you said you guys don't you don't uh, put these dogs in homes that already have a dog. Yeah. This is just a curiosity question. Is it possible that trained dogs learn bad habits from untrained dogs? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, I can see it. I mean, it's, humans do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's hard when you want to, I have a problem with saying no to people. Mm. Well, especially people who are, <laughs> people need. who are coming to help. They're, they're yeah. coming for help. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, mean, in the beginning, we thought it would be hard getting donations or selling our merchandise. Yeah. We thought it would be easier and it would be a lot more that we were going to get more applicants coming, you know, to us. But it was the opposite. We were getting the donations, we were getting the the merchandise sales. And it was hard to get these applicants because our veterans have a hard time asking for help. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it was now that we've maybe that we're maybe a little more established, you know. I mean, there's many organizations that do what we do. We're not national we're local you know Mm -hmm. um so you know someday do i hope that we become national of course but i would need a lot more staff you know yeah Uh, the three four of us five of us just wouldn't be able to do it you know so we honestly thought the money aspect the donations the monetary stuff the sales of the the shirts and, and hats and stuff like that would be harder but it was the complete opposite People were buying our stuff. Yeah. You know, and it was hard yeah. getting, it was hard getting applicants. Well, there's, I mean, there's a reason why the, you know, the veteran suicide rate is so high. You know, they're, they struggle to ask for help. They're, they're proud people. And, yeah. you know, it's so hard to yeah. admit you need help. And, you and I think people don't understand and, um, you know, what, what people need at that point, you know, yeah. it's, uh, and, so before I get into this, we're going to go into this because we, we, we have a, we have something deep I want to go into real quick, but let's take a word from Ooh, our sponsor, break. Legendary USA. All right. What's up, everybody? I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's podcast, Legendary USA. Their selection of leather and denim jackets, vests, gloves, chaps, and riding shirts are 100% made in the USA with a lifetime warranty. Legendary USA isn't just about style, it's about quality. With American-made products and a commitment to excellence, you can trust that you're getting gear that's built to last. Legendary USA isn't just for bikers. They have a full selection of shirts, hoodies, EDC, 
tactical and survival gear, all made here in the USA. And here is the best part. Legendary USA is offering our listeners an exclusive deal. When you shop at legendaryusa.com and use the promo code LEGENDARYPOD, you'll get 15% off on your first purchase. That's legendary with a D and pod for podcast. So why settle for ordinary when you can be legendary? Click that link in the description to head on over to legendaryusa.com to explore their fantastic range of products and use the promo code LEGENDARYPOD to snag your 15% off discount today. Now back to the show, and thank you for Legendary USA for supporting this podcast. Yeah, buddy. I love being legendary. (laughs) Just got my vest recently from Chris. Mm Mm-hmm. And actually, a jacket, too. I can't, I can't wait for it to get cold again to use it because... Can't wait for it to get cold again. Think about what well, you're just saying. I know. Right I don't really mean that, but... I'm a winter guy, man. So I, I, <laughs> no, not this me. Heat, this heat is horrible. Not me, but... <laughs> but I'm not a all-the-gear-all-the-time kind of guy, no. which I know I should be, but I'm not. So that leather is hot, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's almost 100 outside right now. I can't imagine leather enough to go for a ride, but oh, yeah. it's amazing stuff, amazing quality. We've got gloves. We've got jackets, vests. Um, they got all the good stuff. Um, definitely check them out. I love, I love, I love my vest from there. Super soft. Oh, uh, it's so nice. Yeah. You go. You know, we've been to all these rallies, and there's all these leather tents. You know, and they're all made in Pakistan or wherever, from and China or China, wherever. And they just, if you hold one and hold the other one, it's just night and day. Yeah. Quality that's soft American made leather is beautiful. Uh, so yeah. hey, we digress. Um, gotta give our, our guy Chris a little credit, man. He's give, give him some props. Um, I, I think when, what I was gonna say before this, um, people don't understand PTSD and it is a form of depression in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. and people don't understand depression if they've never suffered with it or they haven't been in a field where they somehow have been trained to recognize it and, and deal with it. I think the average person has no idea, like they're at a loss. They don't know what to do. Um, one of my first experiences was at the VA in, um, in, uh, East orange. Mm -hmm. And I used to check pacemakers for a living and we were there checking pacemakers and, uh, had a room full of vets and um, had a couple of young guys who, you know, had a variety of issues um, who were young vets. And one guy um, had a pacemaker and a uh, nurse practitioner walked in and dropped a clipboard. And the clipboard hit the floor like perfectly flat. And you're in the VA and VAs are like old, big, like echoey, a lot. It's just echoey rooms, right? Yeah. And when this clipboard hit the floor, this dude was out of the chair and on one knee and ready. Like there was no thought about it. Yeah. Like it was, you know, the switch had flipped and it scared the crap out of me because I didn't, I didn't see him. You know, I didn't see that coming, you know, and, and that's something that like people are going through their day dealing with. And when I was peeling through the layers of operation Beethoven, you guys have on your YouTube um, site a, a video that really, I, I got to say, it, this video needs more views. Like it needs, um, it was done in conjunction with Barb's Harley Davidson. Yeah. And um, it's, it was uh, filmed upstairs in their hog room. Is that where it was filmed? Yeah, yeah I believe it was in the, in upstairs. Yeah. Did yeah. Wait, where's this video at? Where do you, where do you find it? It's on uh, Operation Canine Beethoven's YouTube page. It's okay. Called a Veteran's Journey. Called a Veteran's Journey. Yeah. And it's about the, um, Justin, who was uh, a Marine. And, um, did, uh, did a combat tour, obviously at least one, um, and, um, suffered from like serious PTSD and telling his story about, you know, trying to come back into what we would consider normal everyday life into civilian civilian life, life, um, was, was difficult for him. Um, he was injured, turned to painkillers. I'm sure there was alcohol involved. Um, And one of the things that kind of hit me, even though this wasn't even like the most intense part of the story was, you know, people would call him and he would be depressed and not pick up the phone. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually people would stop calling. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, is somebody, you know, with that level of depression and that, that, that level of trauma, you know, close people out. Yeah. They, they close people out. And if you get them and, and you say to them, what do you need? Mm. You're never going to get that answer. Right. You know, you just got to go spend the time or you got, you, you, you have to figure out a way to weasel yourself in. And so often people are like, they give up. It's too hard. They, they, well, it's either, I, I don't, it, it, for some people it is going to be too hard yeah. mo most certainly, but it's also, I think a lack of understanding and, you know, a lack of awareness mm -hmm. of, of just how to kind of open somebody back up. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, he talks about in that video about <clears throat> what his dog has done for him Yeah, and how it changed. And so the gentleman who did this video uh, off camera said, what do you want to get out of this video? And his simple answer was, I want to try to get as many psychiatric service dogs to our veterans as we can, because Xena helped me. Yeah. And continues to help me. And so that was also the other premises of how this started too. Yeah. Like I didn't know Justin at the time when I met RP. Mm -hmm. It was like the three of us came together and it was like meant to be, if you believe in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. you know, <clears throat> RP visiting my father and my father always talked about it to the day he died. Yeah. And then when my father passed away, RP brought Beethoven to the funeral home. And my family loved it, and my mother loved it. I asked the front director, I said, listen, I said, and I, you know, small town Hasbro Kites, everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. Very, you know, well-known rural home in Hasbro Kites. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, I said, this is what I do in a nutshell, and uh, this is what happened with this dog, you know, Beethoven. He is, a, you know, he's a service dog. He's a therapy dog. He's got all his papers good citizen uh, awards and everything. And he says, yeah, Brian, absolutely. I can't tell you no. And so when RP went back to his truck to get Beethoven, everybody loved it. Yeah. I got cousins of mine who talk about, you know, still to this day, you know, the first time they met Beethoven. Yeah. And, and, and the first time they met Beethoven was when my, when we waked my father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they still talk about it and, 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 you know, it, it helps, it helps just like going back with Justin, it's mm -hmm. helping him Yeah, a great deal, you know? And so a part of that video was also why we started what we did. And, you know, I always like to say, we just want to help people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very important. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, you know, divine intervention, you know, that saved Justin's life. I mean, he was, he was yeah. at his, at his breaking point. I, I mean, there's no other way to explain that, right? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's divine intervention. Yeah. Um, and he was at his breaking point when his, when something told his father to call him Yep. and he picked up that phone call. It's a tough video to watch, but I do, I do recommend, I recommend watching it because if, yeah. if you've never you know, and even, you know, I, I talk about like my, my one experience from, and, and there's like, I've worked with people over the years who I've known gone into the service and definitely weren't the same when they came out of the service. Does that mean that they have PTSD and people change over years, but this was like heavy, the, the, this, heavy. The, this is, the, 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 this puts you in touch with it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's real. And, and the reality of it is you said you paced 20, 21 dogs, uh, 20. 20 out of 20 dogs. I mean, it, it's, it's great that you, you help 20 people, but more so than just, just helping somebody, maybe you saved one person. Mm. You hope so. You, you know what I mean? Like I'll it, never know that, you know, yeah. but I, I hope so. And I get asked a lot, like, what are the responses of them once they receive the dog? Like, do they call you? And one of my main focuses for operation canine Beethoven is to have a family to mm -hmm. keep as a family to all the veterans and the dogs that we placed. And we want to be a part of their lives as long as they want to be a part of our lives. Because if they're falling down on hard times and if they need a bag of food, if they need treats, if they need toys, they need bowls, call me. 
we'll get it to you one way or the other. Yeah. Um, and either I'll bring it to you or I like to say, we'll just Amazon it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Amazon should pay me because I say they that should. a lot. <laughs> but uh, but they should no, pay I mean, all of us. They, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I you talk about Amazon. I mean, for the first time in my entire life, I just ordered Amazon for the first time and I'm 43. What, Prime? No, just regular. Oh, just Amazon. ordered from it. Just yeah. used Amazon for the first time. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, friends of mine can't believe it, and I'm like, no, it's the wow. first yeah, like three weeks ago. Yeah. Oof. You know, my my niece's birthday was you know in June, and I was like, I'm not going to see her, so I e gift her a gift card, and I actually told her, I'm like, listen, I'm like, this is the first time I ever used Amazon, and she's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. She goes, I order everything on there. I said, I know. So first time, and then I start going through the list. I started buying stuff. It's a slippery <laughs> slope, my friend. Yeah, it now, is, it now is. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I hate it. I hate it because <laughs> I hate that it kills like small business, mom and pops. Me too. Oh my god, the convenience. Of it. I, yeah, I hate I hate it for what it is, but I love what it does. Yeah. And, and, and I'm my lunch too. break and I'm like I'm searching I'm like, oh, I like this. I like yeah. that. Now I'm getting emails. You may like this. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. you get the whole, you know, the recommendation oh, stuff, yeah. you know. Oh yeah. But so um, just put something you like in your cart and leave it there for a while. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you <laughs> just start, you know. I, I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, just talk about something specific around your phone and see what pops up. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, like it's like, you know, getting ready to like, you know, schedule it and, and put the hotel reservation in and all of a sudden i'm getting all these other hotels Alerts, coming yep. up yeah yeah but uh you know download coming. the marriott bonvoy app yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean we, i want to form this operation canine beethoven family where they can if they need us and you know and they need anything because we set them up too so once we it's not like i don't want to be like here's the dog guy you know, yeah. see ya. You know, so we set them up. We set worst them up. thing you can do. Yeah, we set them up for a good month or two full of food and 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 treats and toys and a lot of the stuff we get donated, but uh, we won't take the food because each dog has their own dietary needs. Right? Yeah. And so I, I I just want people to know that if they're having a hard time, they can come to us and we'll we'll get whatever we can get to them. Yeah. You know, as fast as possible. That's cool. You know? And uh, you know, and sometimes it happens where they don't. You know, after they get the dog, they Go off into sunset. But what I was trying to say is that we gave a veteran a dog. And uh, he lives down in Tom's River. I'm sorry, no. Manahawkin. Oh, okay. Manahawkin. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went down and I I love going down to the Jersey Shore. Born and raised going down there my whole life. LBI and Chip Bottom. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll make a day trip out of it. You know? And uh, one of my favorite restaurants are down there. So I went down. I met with the father. You know, the son was um, somewhere else at the time, but uh, a beautiful home. And of course, we said yes. And then we, uh, I called the son. I said, listen, you've been accepted to the program. And he was so, like, he really couldn't speak. And he was, you know, thankful and, and grateful. And then about 20 minutes later, as I'm driving back up on the parkway, the father calls me. And he says to me, you, you do not realize how much this means to me and my family, especially as a father, because this is going to help him more than you will ever know. Yeah. And when you hear that, it just yeah. It yeah. puts everything into place. It's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Not only are we going to make a difference in this young person's life, but it's also going to make a difference to his family and his father. You know, and so... Hearing that is why we keep on going. Let's try to just put our head up high. Yeah. And just steamroll through it and, and try to help. Yeah. As many it's got to really just confirm all that yeah. hard work that you guys do and everything that you put into it and the purpose, you know, to get that feedback. That's really cool. And the gentleman came and we had like a nice little uh, handoff, you know, and, um, you know, it was, that was in Saddlebrook, the VFW. And, uh, you know, I get up there, say a few words, and we give the dogs and the riders at Saddlebrook, post 3484, they've been huge supportive of us as well. And, uh, you know, you got grown men in tears. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of these guys are like, don't you ever talk like that again. You know, you got me, you know, got me all in tears and great to see, you know, because it's humbling. Mm-hmm. It's all about helping people especially our veterans well and it shows you in 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 the case of you know in manahawk and you know what 
a spot, you know, that kid was in. Yeah. It, it, it shows you like his father knew where he was, obviously. Yeah. You know, and just, you know, you having your interaction with him, you might, might not realize it, but, but again, like, you know, his father's family close to him, like they knew, they knew where he was, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and he needed help and, you know, it could have yeah. been, you know, it could have been, um, something small or it could have been something bigger than we'll probably ever not know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, he suffers from PTSD, depression. And, uh, you know, I said to him, I says, you know, if you're not comfortable and in, in being a large crowd, I said, we'll, we'll figure something out. You know, he goes, no, I'll, I'll be good. He came up with his mom that day. His father couldn't come. And the mother even said that day, this means a lot. Big deal. It means a lot. Big deal. Now we had a, what, 20 plus year war. How many guys are affected by that? How many people out there that are affected by it that men haven't come from men? Yeah, yeah men, men and women. women. So our yeah. people yeah. Yeah, that have, have that have been dramatically affected by that and, and haven't come forward and admitted it or asked for help. Like there's just probably so many people See, they're not that have to, issues. They're not used to asking for help. No. They're the ones that are saying, help me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, they're going through, you know, uh, war. I mean, and they're, and they're giving people too. Yeah, because they're not. They don't want to ask for help. They're, they're giving right. their lives to their country and, because I mean, they're, they're 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 signing that blank check. Yeah, yeah. They're used to solving problems and not exactly. getting help solving problems and or yeah. asking for help. Yeah, the ones that people go to them for mm-hmm. help. And so, you know, you hope that maybe that'll change. You know, yeah. And it's it's you'll, you'll never know. It probably will never change that way. But you know, if you have a support system behind you. And your family or your father, your sister, your mother say, Hey, this would be a good thing. Yeah. Get yourself a dog. You know, it's and sometimes that's usually the case when there's a family or there that that unit behind them. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, a lot of the times they don't have that. They don't have that support system. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think we're probably light years ahead of where we were for the guys coming home from like World War Two. Right. But we're still light years away from like where we need to be. I feel for like being accepting of the issues yeah, that these yeah. guys have and understanding those, you know, invisible wounds that they have. And we could also go back into the, we can go into this too. Is like government really doesn't help. Not at all. Doesn't doesn't help. At if all. they did, we wouldn't we, we wouldn't, wouldn't need people this. like you guys. You I'd know, be out of business. Yeah, so to speak. No, they don't at all, and, and that's one of the things we've said many times. Yeah. Just with the little event that we're doing, you know the government doesn't help these guys even a fraction of what they need. Yeah. And it, it really is up to all of Not us profits, organizations like trying us. to do something, just something. If everybody does something little, we can make a difference. Exactly. I, I have never been so humbled in my life as to when we sat in this very room and came up with this poker run and, and came up, you know, with, with tunnel of towers, maybe like a day later. Um, yeah. And and the biker community uh, are very giving people. Some of the best, man. They are they are simply the best. Well, it's filled with vets for one, it, so that, they understand. Yes. Yeah, or family members. They mm-hmm. had family members, a, a father, an uncle, or, yep. or a son, for that matter. But the biker community, as we were talking about Bergen County, yeah. Harley, giving people. I mean, such giving people, and I've seen it in other cities and and, and towns and stuff, and how giving they are, yeah, and how supportive they are to any organization. I mean. If it's if it's a child who needs you know donations because the child is sick, it's mm-hmm. just the biker community as a whole is one of the most giving people ever. Who put that there? Yeah, if it's if it's uh, children, dogs, or vet related, man, the biker community is all over. They it. can raise some money, man. All, all, all over it, and, and and honestly, I think what people don't realize is they they give what even they don't have. Mm. Yeah. And I know that we've had people given us more than they, they probably, oh, yeah. you know, than, than they probably, you know, should have, or, 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 or probably could have, but yeah. they make their, they make, they, they, we're talking about people who make sacrifices to give. Yes. And, and yep. that to me is just a breed of person. That is just a, a special, special breed of person. It's yeah. just not, uh, I mean, you know, you when know. we were, when I was told about this event, July 13th, I said, absolutely. Like I, we got to do it. You know? Yeah. So I'm going to be by myself. Unfortunately, I don't think RP or Beethoven is going to be making it, but I'll be there. Okay. As you guys know. And, and 
I'm just all about it. So what do you like when you show up at these events, set up a table, what do you, what do you have? What do you, what are you doing there? T-shirts. Okay. uh, So you're selling your stuff. Yeah, We got hoodies, zip ups, hoodies, uh, our new t-shirt. That we just got not too long ago is the one. That's the one I'm rocking. Here. Bikers one, love merch. They love yeah, to buy merch. They do, they. Yeah, you're rocking. And um, but yeah, we have beanie hats. Okay. Um, you know, so I'm gonna only be able to take a little bit with me because I, you know, I can't fit everything in my yeah. car. So yeah. I'm gonna have I have um, uh, we have our perquette shirts. I call them we call them the perquette shirts because there's a a picture of um, uh, Beethoven. And actually, this one right here, this actually right here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but yeah. So he made that as a shirt. And he's National Guardsman, and he was out in front of uh, Primus uh, Veterans Home uh, yeah. when the height of COVID was happening. And they were there to assist them in anything they needed. And uh, we got this picture done, and it's one of our biggest sellers. That's awesome. The back, yeah, and cool. it says, you know, Operation K9 Beethoven, helping veterans one floor at a time. So I'm going to have cool. my shirts, I'm going to have a bunch of other things. I hope. Yeah, that's cool. No bikers, bikers do love merch. They love shirts. They love hoodies. Um, yeah, and and that's kind of a little segue. Um, we can talk about this offline, but it, I think it'd probably be a great idea to have you on one of our baggers and brews live streams. Mm-hmm. Sure, because those guys, and you don't have to. We can do that virtually. You don't have to come down for that. But that they those that crowd would would love this stuff too because they're yeah. big on vets. They're big on dogs. And they're big on giving back, so we we could we, we could reach we could reach we, a lot of people. I love hanging out with you guys, you know. <laughs> awesome. I mean, we just met, but I feel like I've known you for years. You yeah. Know? So yeah. it's like uh, I can always take the ride down if if schedules don't permit. Then we can definitely do something on Zoom or stream yard. Yeah. 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 No, I mean it's like I said, the biker community is is just a giving community, and they want to help, and they want to help people. Yeah. Yeah, people don't realize that, and they get enjoyment out of it. I, I, I mean, it's a reason. It's camaraderie. It's a reason to ride. It's a reason to I ride. mean, how many rides are set up to raise money for something? Yeah. You know, and it's like it's, it's twenty twenty five bucks for yeah. for the rider, but they get to go ride and do what they love, and mm-hmm. they're also helping something. They come back, have food, and eat. Yeah, and, you know, so the after party can't beat you know, it, man. You, can, yeah. you, can't eat, you know, it's, it's an amazing community. Party. It really is, and so I think it gets a bad rap sometimes. Um, in some segments of the communities because they, they vision, you know, sons of anarchy, hell's angels, whatever. Yeah. But the average, the average rider, the 99%, man, they all they want to do is ride, have a good time and, and help people. And people don't realize just this poker run that we're doing. I mean, yes, we're helping vets. We're donating to tunnel towers. Our goal is $50,000 by the way, okay. to tunnel towers. Getting and, there. Yeah, you know, we're getting there. Wow. And, um, you know, we're doing all that, but at the same time, we're going to help fielders. Mm-hmm. local business we're gonna help uh the pick piccolo pub why are we helping oh no, pub? no no we're not helping pick um, i mean i'll eat there and they're I'll great but there. when it's not um, <laughs> but the village our local bar yeah right? billy boys silly boys another, another local boy at tara's another local bar plus the american legion in pemberton vfw in medford bring in business there we're gonna bring business to those places and not to mention all these vendors that get to come out that are small they're basically these small businesses chasing the American dream with their you know, product selling their stuff. Selling. Yeah. So it's helping a lot of people and they're helping us help vets. It's, it's just a great it's a community of people. Just Is this your first back. year doing it, right? Yes. Listen, this thing started as a little poker run because we were doing group rides. That yeah. A lot of people were coming to and yeah. wasn't, I don't want to say we nobody was getting anything out of it, but kind of nobody was getting anything out no, of it. Nobody was getting it. Right. No. I mean, that was like, it, it was us. It was us trying to grow our YouTube channel okay, and um, and try to kind of get back to the people that watch us and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it really wasn't benefiting anybody but us as the YouTube channel to yeah. grow the YouTube channel. And we've been doing that and chasing that thing for, you know, four or five years. And we and, you know, we're not, you know, famous, but we've grown to a nice little size with a nice community of followers. And we finally were just like, you know, let's stop chasing growing our channel and and let's find a purpose to give back to something. And we're both very much into, you know, the military and the veteran veteran community and, you know, fathers and, that are vets and things like and that. First so, responders are police. Yeah. You know, I'm, so, I'm a nurse by trade. So it's, you know, thank you. It was, yeah. it was just, it was something that hit close to both of us and it was doing something that wasn't for us. And that was kind of what we wanted to do this year. So 
It's amazing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to getting down there and, and hanging out with you guys. I'm so excited. I can't yeah. wait. It's getting close, man. It's getting like, it's starting to like, it's starting to get, it's starting to get exciting. Like it's, r- really it's, it's, it's been work, but I feel like it's really starting to get exciting. Well, it's getting, it's exciting for sure. And it's yeah. getting to that point where I can start worrying about the weather. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> From my experience, it gets exciting. And then that, that, the day before you're like, oh, I wish it's over. Oh, it's going to be a yeah. freaking whirlwind. Yeah. I know it's going to happen and it's, and, and, and our thing is kind of an all day thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was scheduled from 11 to seven, but now that we're at fielders, we really don't necessarily, I guess the sunlight will be our quitting time, but, yeah. uh, um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's going to be a whirlwind and I know it's going to be here and gone and I'm not going to get to talk to and communicate with and thank everybody that I want yeah. to, cause there's so many people that have been involved in, in making this what it's going to be. And, and I know it's going to be so fast and we're going to have so much going on and making sure everything's run right. And, my, and it's going to be. My gut just, tells me we're going to be crazy and we're not going to enjoy it like we'd want to enjoy it if it wasn't our. Oh, event. I'm not really. <laughs> you know, like, like I don't plan time, on it being the, the good old hangout that I usually get. Like from my experience, it's like in that moment when you're doing an event and then when the event is over, like a day or two goes by, it takes you some time to like sit back and reflect on what yeah. you just did. And yeah. that's when you're like, wow, we just. In the moment, you're like running around. You're like, you know, and you're not. So my suggestion is, every so often, take a deep breath and be like, wow. Yeah. Take yeah. That, take that moment in and just be like, wow. This is what we're well, doing. my goal is, and we haven't this even discussed this yet, but my goal is that I can handle <laughs> making sure everything runs good and putting out fires and all that. And I really want him to be able to spend some time with his camera, yeah. going around with the camera, yeah, yeah. getting all the different people on video, just make making it so that we have we have this all captured so that we can a put out a good video about it for everybody that's not there and just be yes. And being just like have the memories because it's going to be so fast that he's going to see things that I didn't get to see and talk to people that I didn't get to talk to and vice versa. So hopefully we can capture as much of it yeah. on video for, you know, obviously we have a YouTube channel, so yeah. video is life. Well, I mean, it is. And, and, and just, just, just documenting kind of, you know, what it is for so many things we do on YouTube is, you know, we're documenting an experience for people who can't experience that. Exactly. Right. I mean, there is, there's lots of people that I think watch us. Some of the, I guess heartwarming is messages is to say, it's like people are like, you know, I can't ride anymore or, you know, you bring me back to riding or I'm not able to ride or I used to ride and it was great to watch your video. And, you know, so I mean, that's a little simple little, it is, It, it, it is. And it's, uh, you know, the, the, the trek has been an experience to say the least, but, um, we've, um, we've gone from never doing an event before outside of a group ride yeah. and our group rides were like this. We posted it. No idea who's showing up. Our last one. Well, actually it, it was, it was the, the first it one. It was the first it one. Was that the was the first insane. one. And, um, we were at Couple fielders. We rented out of fielders okay. and fielders will serve breakfast in the morning. So we're like, we got the bikes parked. We're going in. We're going to grab something to eat. We know it's going to be a long day. And, you know, one of the guys, Sam, who was helping us with this, with this event as well, came in. He's like, you guys got to see the parking lot. And we walked out there and it was like 40 bikes. Cool. Yeah, we yeah. expected like 10 or 12. We expected like 10 people. So we went back inside and Sam came back in again. He's like, yo, you got to see the parking lot. And it was like 100 bikes. It was like 70 bikes. Wow. Wow. I think that so. first one we ended up in the, in the, in the high 60s. And we were like, holy crap, yeah. because it was just a, you know, baggers and brews group ride. Come hang out and ride with us. Yeah. Again, we weren't raising money for anything. Yeah, I mean, the name in itself is interesting. You know? Yeah. So. Um, but that's, that's amazing. That's how little things start. And it's like, you just have an idea, you focus on it, let's execute it. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. just see where it goes. And if it doesn't go anywhere, well, you try again, you know, yeah. set yourself off and, Pick your head up by and and keep it moving. You know? yeah. I, I'm listen. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've gone to a lot of bike runs, you know, mm. over the last several years, and this one seems like it's going to be this may be a good one. This may very well be the biggest motorcycle event that the state of New Jersey has seen since the last Road of the Shore Ooh. pandemic. Oh, it's pressure out there! It, Holy crap! I, I mean, think about that, though. I mean, I mean, I, the state of New Jersey is not big on motorcycle events. We're just not. Yeah. And and nobody's had one. And, you know, Sam, you know, had the Pinelands Bike Fest going for a little while, which started to show some promise. And then we've kind of piled this on top of that in, in a way. But it's. Tell me another event that you've gone to that was motorcycle and 
and veteran fundraisers are related. In, I will say only for, only from being very active on Instagram and stuff like that and watching all that stuff and following all that stuff. I feel like North Jersey does a much better job about doing events, bike nights and things like that than we do down they here. They do a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot they of bike they, they don't have to ride very far to it. Obviously, everything's so congested and, and close, but yeah. I yeah. feel like they always have stuff going on. Every time I see something, I'm like, oh, what's up? It's all the way up there. I'm not, yeah, Bergen yeah. County, Harley. They do a lot of bike nights in the summer. Bergen County. I, can't go up there. I was just going to bring a Rutt Rutt, He's never been to Rutt Oh, man, you're missing. He's no, never been to Rutt Hut. I, I, I'm, a, I'm partial to the hot grill. I like the hot grill. Oh, Clifton. my God. But, yeah. I, but I've been to Hutter Rutt. Yeah, no, Hutter Rutt is. Oh, is that bad? <laughs> you want to know? Yeah. It's great. Oh, yeah, you guys are a few. Yeah, you you, you want to get a ripper. You walk, you walk in the hot grill. <laughs> you're like, uh, one yeah, all the way. I'll have, uh, I'll have one all the way Diet Coke fries. And this guy turns around. He's like, one all the way. Diet Coke <laughs> What's and, one all the way? <laughs> so all the way is um, mustard, chili, cheese, onions. onions. Yeah. I mean, I'm good so far, but what else is everything? I mean, is that's, that's everything. Else? Yeah, mustard, 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 chili, yeah, cheese, chili, onions. Yeah, onions. Okay, yeah. I can tear yeah, that yeah. up. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, relish, yeah. maybe relish. I'm not sure. Maybe relish. Not a big relish fan. But so, uh, what yeah. my my wife's, the relish. My wife's cousin, he's a retired uh, NYPD from the three four. His mom was a little Italian lady. Worked at the hot grill her entire life. Wow. She immigrated here. Really? From, she immigrated here from Italy. Got a job at the hot grill. And it was the only job she ever had. Cooked wieners her whole life, huh? Whole life, man. Whole life to hot grill. I'm telling you a lot. That's I mean, the kind of business it was. The generation of like hot grill, he's right. Because I remember going mm -hmm. when I was younger with my father, because right across the street is a field. So we would like sleigh ride down this field. And we would go and have like hot chocolate and, you know, French fries with gravy and hot dogs. And my father loved hot dogs. So uh, my a, mother does too. It's a North Jersey thing. So you're and Jersey born? I was Jersey born, yeah. Born what town? Hasbrook Heights. Okay. And, uh, so, you know, my father would wake us up at like six o'clock, seven o'clock on a Saturday, feet on the ground, let's go. And then we'd be like, where we're going, wherever the road take us. Mm -hmm. And wherever the road will take us. And he would drive up Route 80 and he would find some of these hot dog places. Go to Johnny's, hot dog Johnny's. Johnny's I mean, all that's these, the one I hear a lot about too. Uh, all hot these dog places, Johnny's is great. There's a spot, I don't know what it's called. We're going to take a hot dog run. It's right by, um, it's all the way up on Route 80. There's a military base up there. Oh, is that the uh, uh is something it 30 -ish? the Picatinny Arsenal? Picatinny, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Picatinny. A, when you come off this one exit, there's a cracker barrel. Okay. And then uh, right off the exit, uh, before the cracker barrel is this hot dog place and it looks like it was an old home, like an old okay. house. Yeah. I can't remember I've what never it's eaten ever. I know because it was on the way to Pub one ninety nine, I feel yes, like. Pub one ninety nine was is right great. there. They got their clams and all I, that. I, yeah. I, I could mm. see this uh yes. I can see. I I know exactly. It's right what you're on the corner about. as you're coming off, the, and it looks like a. It might be called the hot dog house. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it looks like a, like an old fashioned like house. Like a family lived there back in the day, and they converted yeah. it into a hot dog place. But yeah, North Jersey. Why is North Jersey so into hot dogs? I don't know. It was interesting. I just feel like it was like a, a cheap food. I mean, the hot dog. We had hot dog trucks in New York that were just unbelievable. I mean, guys making homemade relish, homemade yeah. onions, like cra crazy, like levels of hot dog stuff that you would never even think would come out of a hot dog truck in a city. And they, they were like leveled up, mm -hmm. you know, Nothing's so much better than a hot dog and a Yoohoo. Yeah. And a Yoohoo. You got to get in a, a can. Though. Listen, I do like you. Not, yeah. You got to have it in the can. My, my favorite hot, one of my favorite drunk hot dog places went out of business. Libby's. Libby's. Where's Libby's? Libby's was in Patterson. Patterson. And uh were you there? We, did you do the ride where we went down to the hot dog place down at the right. shore? Yeah, yeah. That was um what's what that was, called? Oh, what was the name of that place? I thought there was a famous oh, hot dog place in Wildwood. Shit. How about this spot? Talk about Bayonne. Mm. Petritus? No, no. No, you never went there? No, I've never been there. No? No of it? No. Really? In Bayonne? No. 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 Uh, my, my 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 Bayonne was my my Bayonne. There was a Spanish restaurant I remember we used to go to. I used to have really good paella, and then like the rest of my Bayonne was like Judicky's, Shelley's, Chippy's, okay, and the Buster Brown store because that's where we used to go buy our shoes. It was like waste. That's way, way before my time. Buster yeah. Browns. Yeah, <laughs> man, that was Buster Brown was a thing, man. Yeah, that's what? way before what my time. Buster Browns. Buster Browns was that was a thing, and you we and it was like a walk. It was probably honestly, it was probably like a six block walk. Was it? But when you were a kid in the summer, you were like, "What? Where are we going?" It, like, because my grandmother walked everywhere. She walked everywhere. You know, she walked from Judicky's to St. Henry's you can't in, go the, in the winter. Really she walked here from Ireland, didn't she? Yeah. Just about. I mean, also had the, the one hot dog truck. Uh, now it's on First Street Park. Dilly Dog. 
Dilly Dogs. I feel down there all the time. I feel man. like I knew Dilly Dog from when I worked from when I worked there because he's got a Bayonne Medical Center sometimes. Yeah, he has a truck out in First Street Park now. Yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to alert Tony and Carrie about this podcast because you guys are probably talking about all places. I mean they're we're, they're we're Jersey just, City Bay owned people, so yeah, yeah I mean, hot dogs are a big thing. Yeah. Tony's born living in Manahawkin now. Yeah. Tony's Tony was born in Bayonne. I think Tony's Jersey City. Is he Jersey City? I think Carrie's Bayonne, if I, I they can correct me if yeah. they listen to this, but yeah, that's their so, neck of the woods. And my parents, um my great grandmother first immigrated here, she was in Bayonne, then they were in Jersey City. My mother lived at Five Points back okay. in Jersey City. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is like not even some place you really go to these days. Yeah. Um or die. It's it was, yeah, it's 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 like that. It's it's a, it's it's, that it's, it's a rough neighborhood. Um and they lived in Greenwood for a while. I have a pictures I have pictures somewhere of Greenwood, mm. Jersey City, and it was beautiful. And and now Greenwood, you go to Greenwood, you don't know whether or not to take your wallet with you or leave it in the car. Like it's, it's a conscious it's gone, decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it doesn't sound safe in either spot. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like, do I take it with me or do I just leave it? Like, or do I just start separating stuff, put stuff yeah, in different pockets? Like if you got to consider those things, you just don't go. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Go there for work, but it, it's, 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 you it's know, rough. I've, I've had to go through those areas mm-hmm. and then you go through those areas and then you go like downtown Jersey city on mm-hmm. the waterfront. And that's, you know, Washington Boulevard. And I used to work on the 17th floor from uh, the Newport Mall. Okay. A radio station down there. And um, the radio station is no longer there. Now they're in the city. But even back then, downtown, after a certain time, you didn't really want to hang out. But now they've, now, they've, now they've, you know, brought it up. What's back then? How long are we talking? Oh, we're talking... Way, way off track here. 2020? Okay. Not 2019, 2020, okay. 2021 ish. All right. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember the candy store? No, actually, I take that back. Do you remember the candy 2001, store? 2001. 2001. 2001. Do you remember the candy store in the Newport Mall? I remember the record shop. Okay. There was a record store there. Not far from the record store was a candy shop. Yeah. And that was. Uh, my, take it to the candy my, shop. My, my Aunt Louise's candy shop. Let yeah, George lick my lollipop. There you go. <laughs> it was 2001. Yeah. Not, uh, yeah. I would say 2000, 2001. Yeah. Working so, business, but so cool. can, can on Beethoven. <laughs> this is what happens. Um, this is this is what this is what happens to me. And he's I, like, I, I do have a legit just, question though. But I, do, you know what, Beethoven does like hot dogs. See that? Yeah, you, and, and and meatballs with no sauce on it. There you go. So, <laughs> sauce gives you heartburn. One of our um, favorite restaurants is in Moonaki, and so we always where in Moonaki, New Jersey. Moonaki. So like you know where uh, MetLife Stadium is? Yes. It's around that area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's behind. Another that trivia, was, another trivia yeah. question. So, Go ahead. I know you said your whole goal is just to help people, and that's what your guys are doing as yeah. K9 Beethoven. Do you have, We and we mentioned this because you mentioned needing more people, do you have like a bigger goal, a long-term goal? Have you guys thought of that as an organization? Like yeah, would, you, just, would you like to expand? Would you like to be, maybe not nationwide, but just more yeah, than just I where we are? I think the goal is, is to expand. Okay. I and mean, I think it would be – dumb of us to say let's just stay where we are right i mean we want to improve yeah we want to improve and improve it as we go by i mean listen we got a great crew of people i mean they're all volunteers the pet therapy uh program people they're taking time out of their day on the saturdays on the weekends even during the day to go to like schools and stuff even though schools are closed right now but it's the summertime but you know they they do a lot and they don't they should get a lot of the credit you mm-hmm. know, because they're taking time from their day from work uh, to bring their dogs to all these places. And, you know, you got, you know, the trainers, they, they, they're helping us huge, you know? So yeah. it's, yeah, I, we, we would love to expand it. Um, we just hope that, you know, we can get maybe more people, you know, to help us as well. So what do you think from, from a very basic perspective you need to start expanding? I think we need to, uh, you know, we can't always be at the same spot, all of us. And, and sometimes it's tough because like there has been times where we've overbooked like an event, like where we're like, oh, we got this. Oh, we, we said yes to this mm-hmm. the same day. Yeah. So luckily our head trainer, uh, Chris, uh, you know, he's got family members who, who help us. So there's certain events that he'll go to with them. And then I'll go to another event with Arpy, like, 
you know, it in the beginning, every weekend going hard was me and Arpy going to all these bike runs, going to all these like, you know, festivals and affairs and, and, and just hitting the pavement and going. But then within the last two years or so, we've gotten people to help us. So like one example, like I had to be somewhere early in the morning for a check presentation with RP. And then luckily Chris was able to stay at that warrior's run and do that and sell where I had to jump in the car and go to Bayonne for another check presentation. Like, so now we're getting to the point where we need more people that want to come out and help us. You so know? you need volunteers yeah, that volunteers want to be a part of your organization, part of it, be on the team well the therapy program, and donate yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, it's, it's must, love, must love dogs. Yeah, well. well, of course. I mean, <laughs> you know. And you get the people who are like, yeah, yeah, I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. It's a lot. And then they don't realize they start to realize it's certain things. Yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, oh, we'll help. I mean, listen, I'm not going to force anybody. I'm not going to knock on your door. If you come to me. No, and you say, have to want to. You, you want to volunteer. Mm-hmm. You want to want to volunteer. I can't force you. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. just can't. I mean, I, I'll give you a team. You don't want somebody that you're no. forcing. No. You want people that are all in. You know, yeah, I mean, we have, like I said, we have a great crew. It's me and RP, uh, Maureen, who keeps us men together, keeps us grounded. Uh, when we fight each other, she's the referee, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then we have Chris, and then we have the pet therapy program, and we have a young gentleman named Nick. He's like our project manager. He's always willing to want to help us and, and stuff like that. He's you know, he's in high school and he loves what we do and. And so we have that and we partnered up with, like I'd said to you guys earlier, the New Jersey Veterans Network uh, with Doc and um, his partner, uh, the president over there named, uh, what's his name, uh, Mike. And so, you know, we're having, you know, getting more people to help, which is great. Because mm-hmm. In the beginning, it was like every weekend. Like even my mother would say to me, don't you want to have a life? Like when you start something like this, it's your life. You have to keep on moving, keep on going, because eventually, hopefully, you hope that people will come on board and love it and want to help too. Yeah. So, so are most of the vets that do reach out and apply are they in this Northeast area? Yeah, I mean, we'll okay. we we service New Jersey, um, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, you know, and we'll we'll go further if it's a right fit. Obviously, right. if it if it's going to work out, um, but uh, you know, we had a little i think it was mississippi i think we did one and it didn't work out and so how come it, 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 for certain reasons i it's far yeah it's far and it's for other and reasons, you can't stay I, I, as like involved as you want or it was joplin missouri actually it was joplin missouri yeah and it just didn't work out without getting into real detail okay i feel and, i feel like you would need a chapter like yeah. you, you would have to yeah. expand this in chapters yeah. like hey if so if, that's my qu- that was yeah, my question what happens right. is it's like let's just say like <laughs> We in a situation like that where all the money that we're getting in is going to our program, right? So if a situation occurs and they're like in Joplin, Missouri, we have to get back out there again. Yeah. Or or, or we have to pay somebody to get there. To get there. Right. So then we're so then we're we're losing money in a way. Right. We, we raised all this money for that one particular dog and sponsorships and stuff like that. But then if it doesn't work out, we're, we got to pay more money. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. So I think what we did was we got excited. We learned our lesson. We brought it back, you know, right. And we said, all right, you know what, let's do the Metro area, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, Connecticut. I'm willing to go to Rhode Island. You do like you know, four hours, right. four hours, within four to five hours, four hours you know, yeah. you know, we can drive if we, if we have to, you know, um, and so it just did, the Joplin thing didn't work out. And I think that brought us back down to reality right. and said, you know, it's, and then we right. would need chapters, you know, but I mean, so, that would be a great idea too down the road. I'm, I would be open to having a chapter, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that was my, that was my next question mm-hmm. because George knows I like to do things big and not yeah. just go simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if in your vision of expansion and, and being more nationwide, is that kind of the way maybe it needs to start is if somebody was to reach out to you from Joplin, Missouri or whatever it is yeah, and say, awesome. we're interesting in, in like, or Florida, Miami. help it. Yeah. Wherever. Yeah. And, and maybe then you just start like working with somebody to, to build 
for no better term, chapter yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Is, is that kind of how you could expand or do you have a different it. vision I, for I it? I see it maybe down the road. Yeah. Anytime soon, maybe not so much to be right. honest. It's you a know, process. It's a process. It's, it's you know. But you need people in those locations that want to do this. Yes. Yeah. And and are going to want to have the same passion. Pe- people, right. People is more than one person. Heavily vetted, yeah. obviously, I mean, and every having a passion. Every organization has their main three or four people, right? You know, and and, and so, you know, if they want to do it, it would it would take a lot for me to consider that because it's a lot of work. Yeah, you don't realize it until you're in it. Like yeah. it's a lot of work. It's your weekends. It's your you know during the week you're doing stuff like you it's know they're kind of like YouTube. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's it's you know there's times where like I, I you know I work Monday through Friday. And then I may have to leave and and just say like an organization reached out to us. Hey, can you come and speak about your program? Like, or we have, you know, another uh, pet therapy program thing. I don't really tend to go to a lot of pet therapy program events um, because I don't have a dog right now, but sometimes I'll go, you know, support, right. you know, hang out, you know? And uh, so it's, it, it, there's a lot to do to keep this afloat. Yeah. You know? No doubt. And so, it is time consuming, but you know what? I have to say this though. I don't know if you guys, I think you guys would agree with me for what you guys do. Not only should we be thanking our veterans, but, and the dogs that we're saving and because they're doing amazing things too. But in hindsight, our support system, our families, oh, yeah. you know, like there are times where I'm not around for a whole weekend, mm-hmm. you know, and then I want to see my mom or I want to hang out with my brother or what. So we got to thank them as well. Our family, oh. like, you know, I want to thank, uh, you know, Arby's, you know, wife and, and, you know, Maureen's husband and, and even Chris and Sam and their family members, because this takes a lot of work. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, you guys are putting together this huge event that's going to be successful. There's no doubt about it. I yeah. mean, you're connected with tunnels for towers. They do amazing things. And so it takes a lot of work. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes you do feel bad cause you're like, oh, I'm, I'm busy, busy, busy doing this. Yeah. And you know, if you have kids and, and, and just family, it's like, but they, but they're supporting us. Yeah, no doubt. So they have yeah. to be thanked as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I've had to miss, you know, certain things, family gatherings and functions and stuff, but luckily they all love what we do and they understand it. Yeah, no doubt. You they know? deserve they deserve a, a ton of stuff. credit because I mean, I mean, we've been on this little journey for about five years now um, with baggers and brews. And now recently within the last year, getting into this podcast and uh, we spend a lot of time away from them trying to do this stuff. And they definitely, they're definitely sacrificing a lot yeah. of what they want out of life for us to do this crap. So they definitely deserve credit. And, and, and I mean, up until now, we haven't even been doing anything that was for anyone else other than just our own yeah. hobbies yeah, and yeah. enjoyments, you know? This, so this definitely, this definitely dialed it up a, a, a notch, I, I would say from, from the time commitment, obviously, but um, listen on Tuesday, my wife was like, what's going on this week? I was like, oh, we're going to have a nice quiet weekend. <laughs> and uh, last Tuesday. Yeah, 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 last Tuesday. You told you were gonna have a quiet weekend. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we're gonna have a quiet weekend. It was like, oh yeah, we're gonna we go. Mm. We have a, a veteran buddy of ours trying to get a business off the ground. We went down to shoot a video to support him, and you know, support his business that he's got going on. So we did that in the morning, and then at some point he sent me a text that was like, "Do you want to go sell merch at a, at a local bike night?" Which is where we were last night, which I didn't think was Saturday. I thought it was Tuesday, and Stacy was like, "You realize that bike night's tomorrow night?" I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And she goes, "And you, know, you get the podcast on Sunday," and I was like. Next weekend it'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Next weekend it'll be quiet. <laughs> you got some husband chores to do. She's making that list as we speak. He, he's got the gears turning. He's like, I don't think next weekend's quiet. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you guys, what you need to do is you need to download a calendar. We have one. And your oh, phone. And your oh, phone. Oh, because, yeah, we do. Because we Maureen made us down. And listen, I don't like downloading apps. And it was one time where like we totally forgot that we had an event and we missed it. Oh, and then so you say, you're out, download this app and, and so we put everything in the app no we have that uh, yeah i don't um, i don't use it we have yeah, yeah <laughs> my wife, a lot that's of us, part no, of the problem my, my wife uses it i'm trying <laughs> i'm trying to set up baggers and brews and this american ride business <laughs> on this calendar that he refuses to use so i have to like middleman his wife to let him know that we have something shoot him a text on. but no we have uh oh, there's always one in the group yeah. oh man when i when i came to my wife with this idea because 
uh, again, we've been we've been running with this baggers and brews things for four or five years now, eating up a lot of time, a lot of time away from the wives and kids. And uh, and then I came to her with this new venture of <laughs> it's separate and it's different than the, but it's gonna eat up more time and you could have seen the looks I got. But um, no, they they definitely deserve a ton of credit for supporting us um, in our wild, crazy dreams of yeah. I don't even know what our dreams are, but whatever. Um, but hey, we're doing something good right now, which is for now. I'll take yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, it, Stun- it works. Tunnel Towers thing is it's exciting. It's um, you know, again, we wanted to pick something where we could have some impact, obviously, and um, but not something that was so big where I felt like the CEO was making a million dollars, you know, trying mm-hmm. to run an organization because I just didn't want my. Didn't want my money to pay for somebody's three homes and a and a Mercedes. I, yeah. I just a lot of them do. And I, and I'm not saying those organizations don't do good things, but everybody you know needs to make a choice as to who and what they're going to work with. And Tunnel of Towers was you know I mean we I moved into Hoboken in 2001, so it's uh, 2002 actually or 2002. So like you know I spent a lot of 911s down at the waterfront, and so it's always been something that. Um, you know, my wife was living in Hoboken at the time that it happened. Her roommate at the time um, was in the path train that was underneath the World Trade after the first plane hit that they did not let people out of the tra- out of the train. She was in the last train that they did not let disembark and they turned that train around. So she was in she was in the tunnels in the river when the towers went down. It was minutes. Yeah. So it's, um, it's obviously something that's always been close to us. And we say this so often, you know, the term never forget, which is something if you've been around nine 11, like never forget. And I'm like, how could you like, it's their slogan, never forget. Yeah. And, and it could never like resonate with you. It's like, I'm like, how, how, could, you, how could you forget that? Like, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like Pearl Harbor. Nobody's forgotten Pearl Harbor. How can mm-hmm. we possibly exactly. forget, you know, nine 11. And then we kind of see the stuff that's going on in the world right now. And we go, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I never forget means a little something more yeah. than it did in two thousand three. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's it, it carries it carries a lot more weight with me than it ever did. Yeah, you know. So, but it's, it's an amazing. You know, what you guys do is amazing, and like I said, I keep on repeating myself, but I'm looking forward to this. I am too. I'm it's looking, gonna be I'm it's gonna be a fun forward, day. Man. It's, it's gonna time. be great. You guys got some bands playing, or we got bands. Music? George yeah. can tell you about we, the bands. We got bands. We got a we got a Hendrix impersonator, a Hendrix tribute guy coming. Nice. We've got a couple of local cover bands coming. We've got um, a lot of guys who are vets, man. A lot a lot of yeah. band members donated. Yeah. They donated their time to this. Yeah, event. none of these guys. We're not. Thank God, because we didn't have the budget for it. none of these guys are are we're paying. You know, they're all That's volunteering right. their time, which is awesome. Yeah. We got. Um, you know, porta potties. I mean, as, when I say, like I said before, I was humbled. The amount of people that were like, you know, I mean, you don't get what you don't ask for, but the amount of people that went asked, yeah, step to the plate. Yeah, I mean, or they pot- realize what you're doing. Yeah, and like, hey, how can we? Yeah, yeah. porta potty. The, the, the really cool Something thing, like that, like you know? we didn't, we had zero budget for this event. Yeah, like we don't have any money. Like we're a tiny YouTube channel, barely getting by. Like we don't have a budget to put on a big event. Mm -hmm. So our goal was to do as much as we could with people donating because of what we're doing, sponsorships and donations, fees and stuff like that. And and anything we did have to pay for was you know going to come out of what we're raising, which we, we wanted to make as little as possible. And we really have managed to do that. We've had so many great companies that are like. We'll give you, you know, like you said, the porta potty was mm. was a star. Star, star, you guys do a tricky tray too, star septic. Right? We do a what? Do a tricky tray. So what yeah, silent auction. It's it's silent. Silent. Auction. Yeah. So it's okay. silent auction. It's kind of like South Jersey for uh, tricky tray. Oh, is yeah. is is Chinese auction inappropriate now? Well, people that, call it a tricky tray. In North Jersey, they just always called them tricky tray. No, that too. But, but other people call it a card party. I've never. Well, heard I've of never that. heard of that. That that, yeah. that must be some Hudson or County raffle. stuff. Raffle. Raffle I think Hudson is County, Hudson yeah. County is definitely a card party. We call yeah. it raffles too. Yeah, I mean, I I, I call raffles. it a tricky tray. But for all <laughs> intents and purposes, it is a tricky tray. But it's silent. Yes, yeah, so we've yeah, had we've yeah. had a lot of items donated that we're going to be able to raffle off. <laughs> awesome, that's great. Um, which is great. We just got another one today. Awesome. Um, so that I mean, just the people that have jumped in to help out. You know, the um, a tent company, or whatever. You know. Kind giving us a massive discount, a huge discount. The the twelve porta parties potties that are like free, just donated. 
Um, we've had other things. Like, I'm, I'm missing things, but we've had we've had uh, so much stuff. We're getting a sound system that somebody's volunteering their their time um, with. It's um, awesome. That's what it's all about. We are uh, we have an MC because everything we got to spend money on comes out of you know what we want to go to yeah. our veterans yeah. and first responders. So we're trying to keep that as absolute minimum. And uh, and like I told him, in a way, this whole thing was a blessing with the Moose Lodge um, bailing on us because we were actually paying a rental fee for that and, and where insurance. we're at now really? and an insurance fee and now where we're at now we're, we're I not can see the paying insurance anything. fee but i mean come on I, I... yeah so we're actually saving more money all for for free yeah exactly yeah. and you're so, a member too right exactly but yeah. now now where we're at they're not asking us for anything and we'll bring a lot of business into them they'll have a great day you know on alcohol sales things happen for a reason it, absolutely yeah absolutely so it's, you know, it was stressful the night that it happened but it was extremely stressful <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be yeah <laughs> you know you're an event this big that we've been planning now for probably eight months and 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 been booked with the with the moose for over six um to have them all of a sudden be like hey i got bad news you can't have it here was like i my pit in my stomach i was oh, just yeah. like and i had to call him and i was like hey uh are you sitting down i got i just came from the moose and he's like what and i'm like they're not letting us have it and I was, he's like what are you just kidding me and i'm like mm, they're not letting us have it back. I got all my money back. Yeah. I got all my money back. Right. And that's, you know, and we got a video coming out this week. Just FYI, we're not, you know, pulling any punches on that. We think what they did was really jacked up. And uh, that you guys watch on Baggers and Brews. You'll see the video coming out this Tuesday about uh, the Moose Lodge. But we did our rant. We ripped on them. That'll be out Tuesday. But we're trying to move on. And everything works out, like you said, for a reason. And uh, it's going to be amazing. We got so many so many awesome people helping us out with this. It's so cool. Yeah. Like I said, I'm looking forward to it, man. Look forward to things like this, you know, and, and, and while I'm there, if there's anything I can do to help you guys, let me know. Thank hey man, you. we just want people to come and buy your stuff and, and contribute to the, the operation canine Beethoven. So where, if, if, um, if people want to donate money or buy, is there a place to yes. donate just money without buying merch? No, you can go to our website which is Operation Canine Beethoven.com. Okay. Uh, the letter K, the number nine. Go to our website. You can buy our merchandise or you can donate right through the website. Okay. Uh, we take like PayPal and Venmo and stuff like that. And then our address, our PO box is there too. If you want to send a check, um, you know, dealing with Venmo and stuff like that, they take their fees. Right, you know, of so, course. But, but, you know, our PO box is there and you can, send us a, a check if you want. Okay. Uh, and then you can go to our Instagram page or Facebook page, Operation Canine Beethoven, like it, share it, you know, tell people all about it, spread, spread the good word about Operation Canine Beethoven. That's what it's all about. And then um, on July 13th, I'll be there with a table. We'll be selling some merchandise. Um, I'm not taking everything with me, but uh, I'm going to take a good amount and uh, we're going to be selling that. Uh, and then I, I can also take donations at the table as well. Hopefully you'll sell out all your stuff early and then you that's just hang plan. out and have some drinks. <laughs> that's the plan. Then I may have to Uber it back to the hotel. But hey, that's, you know, it's that's, all, it's that, all good. That's ultimately we'll figure planned, it out. guys. I mean, I want to bring what I, you know, like I said, we have hoodies, we have zip ups, we have pullovers, we have shirts, you know, stuff like that. And, um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'm hoping to, you know, I do, a, I did my event yesterday. And so RP texted me and he was like, uh, how you doing? I said, well, check the numbers. You have the access. And he says, well, don't come back if the bins are not empty. Oh, dang. <laughs> Our yeah, he's, oh. yeah, he's, yeah, he's business. Yeah, he runs his own business. So he's, he's a business dude. But I love dang. him. But uh, we get on each other's nerves. But, uh, you know, we have a great relationship. And, and But, you know, I didn't sell everything out. We did really well, um, which is, you know, like I said, Bayonne, man, they, they, they've they been very good to us over That's the years. That's awesome. And, and the Rotary Club over there and, and just, uh, you know, the, everybody there has been great. And so, you know, we're going to get uh, get the merchandise put in order and put back into place. And I think our next event is going to be with you guys. I'm excited. Yeah. July. Do you have July? And I know because I picked the date, it's going to be sunny and beautiful. Do you have like a pop-up tent or something? Oh, absolutely. Okay, perfect. I just, I've, I still got to go around, and I've said this when yeah, I talk no, to everybody, I, I, but yeah. all my vendors, like, I don't want you melting in the sun. It's no, going to be got, hot. I got, I, got, uh, I got tents. I got my weights. Awesome. Yeah, we, we, we roll awesome. up professionally. 
Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I usually do like a two table, three table setup. Beautiful. Um, for this, it might be like one or two tables because I can't fit all my tables in the, yeah. in the car. So. Whatever you need. We got plenty of space. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, bring what you can because yeah, I think, uh, I think you're going to sell some stuff. I know, I know bikers love dogs and they love vets. So yeah. you're going to sell some stuff for sure. Win, win, win. Have you heard of, um, one dog, one soldier, one. I've heard of that. I've something heard else. One yeah, dog, bite, one dog, bite one soldier. Something. Yeah, I have heard of that. Okay. Because yeah. it's. um. That's a local down here, right? It's another organization that's, I guess, similar to what you guys do. I've heard of it. I don't. It's been a while. They'll since be I've there. Been. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, you can. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if you guys you know have rivals and no. you, i don't know how i, I, I don't know how it works in the canine no. <laughs> listen I, it's, it's funny that you bring that up because I, I i was talking to somebody yesterday and 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 uh he's a part of a group called uh canine for warriors and they're like national they're out in florida and stuff and we were just talking i'm like you know listen there's small organizations that do what i do and there's ones that are national and this and that and the other thing there's no reason to have any like friction no competition. God, no. and I, I i go he goes no i agree 100 percent. i go we're all doing the same thing it's all about the common same good. purpose it's the, 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 yeah. it's the same purpose yeah and you know uh, they can reach more people we can we can go local we can do this we can do that i said we shouldn't be in competition with anybody god no it's anybody anybody it. anybody who thinks that it doesn't clearly doesn't get it yeah, especially like, they, especially just, an organization that's not <laughs> making a profit. You're doing yeah. it for and, and and there's a lot of organizations that are out there. I'm not going to say is there going to come a time where we have to take a salary. We may have to, to grow. To. Maybe we may have. You to. may have. Yeah. To. Um. You know that's in the hands of the accountants and the yeah. lawyers, I guess. You right. But yeah, there's going to come a point where we're going to have to. Like people say to me all the time, like, wouldn't you love to quit your job? And make this a full time job and mm-hmm. get paid, right. get benefits for something you love. The problem is, I love what I do for a living Monday through Friday. Oh, okay. So I run a thrift store. Well, you're store. rare. I, yeah, I do. You run a thrift store? A thrift store, and we help the community in Bayonne as social services, and we have a food uh, pantry. And uh, oh, wow. so, so it's like, I love this, what I do. This, this is going to be an offline conversation. That is an offline conversation. <laughs> but, but, um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I like, you know, are there days where I'm like, oh, I got to go to work? We all have those days. But I've been with the same agency for it's going to be 10 years in July. And, and I started as an instructor. It's an agency that, you know, um, has two group homes for adults who are 21 and over who are developmentally disabled, uh, Down syndrome, wow. Asperger's and stuff like that. And then th- there's a center where I used to work where, that's their job. Like they're going to work just like we go to work every day. And, yeah. and we have programs, a crushing program, to, you know, aluminum, you know, recycling program, oh, okay. shredding. And it's to teach them like life school. That's and like, uh, get them out in the community. He's, uh, what did Tim work for locally? My brother-in-law. Uh, yeah, I forget, but yeah, yeah. They had the same type of thing where they had same type of thing here. Yeah. And so it's, you know, so I, I like what I do. So it's like, I love my both jobs. Yeah. So like it would, yeah. I think it would take a lot for but, me. The, but the reality of growing something like what you're doing with Operation K9 Beethoven, if you want people, if you want it to grow, people have to invest more time. Yeah. And to invest more time, they have to not have another job. Yeah. So you might have to have people on salary. And yeah. I know a lot of people, when it comes to charity of types of things, they get really crazy about it and they get like all butthurt if 109,000% of the profit's not going towards whatever the, the purpose is. Yeah. But yeah. Like who, aside from somebody who's a bazillionaire with free time, like who's got the time yeah. to do it full time and, and still you're gonna live? Have, you're going to have administration costs. Of course. Like that. I mean, of course. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 know, you are. I think as long as that stuff's disclosed, it's fine. Yo, yeah. It's, right. you know, I mean, we, we do have a bank account, obviously, and, yeah. and we, we do need office supplies, you know. Of course. And, um, you know, so it's, yeah, I mean. What I mean, are you guys I mean, supposed to you know, pay for every little single thing out of yeah. your own personal money. Like yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, in the very beginning that happened, of course. Know, um, and it still happens from time to time here now. Uh, but listen, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, there is a goal at some point to maybe cut a salary, but I ain't gonna, I don't want to, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, six, seven, right, 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 right. Yeah, make, yeah. make me, make me comfortable. Right. You know? 
and I'll continue doing what I do for my day job. And, you know, if it gets to that point, it does. You know, and if it doesn't, we'll just keep on trucking and keep helping people. Keep helping people. That's, that's it. awesome. So. All right. So what else you got, man? Uh, that's that's it. You're the inquisitive one. We are. You, you, did good, you did good today, man. You, you did questions. Considering man. the odd man out that doesn't have <laughs> pets and I didn't come from North Jersey, you I think like, I, I think I hold my own. You held your own today. Well, you, listen, guys, thanks for having us because I, I, I tell people all the time when I do like podcasts and interviews and stuff, we can only do so much locally, like from like Facebook point of view, yeah. Instagram, social media. Uh, our events that we pull through, but having a medium like you guys to like push our mission and our purpose. So thank you for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. I look forward yeah. to seeing you. Guys. Canine Beethoven dot com, right? It's good. Uh, Operation, Operation, Operation Canine. Operation Canine, Canine, Canine Beethoven. Operation Canine so you don't have to be local to us here to help out. If you are listening from anywhere else, you mm-hmm. can go to Operation Canine Beethoven dot com and buy some merch. You can just flat out donate if you yeah. like dogs yeah. and vets. Just do it. You know, or like if you it. feel feeling real giving, sponsor a dog. Yeah. Too. Is that how that works? You can sponsor you can, a dog? Yeah, you can mm-hmm. sponsor a dog or you can sponsor three. What does it mean to sponsor <laughs> a dog? Sponsor so what would it mean to sponsor a dog? Meaning that an organization uh, like the Bay Hill Rotary Club, um, they sponsored, uh, they raised uh, money for three dogs. So that was that when you were said it took like $7,000 or whatever? Is that what you mean? It, like it, it, it's $7, To cover that it's cost? Seven, it's $7,000 a dog. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so an organization could do that for yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, and so... You know, um, so an MC can do that. Absolutely, they could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's. Um, what happened to your mind? I don't know. Just, just, I know. Okay. It got, it got, got a limp. limp. Yeah, it got loose there. Yeah. Got limp. But yeah, so um, amateurs. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but now yeah, it's seven thousand dollars a dog. So you know, individuals can sponsor a dog. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. If they want, I mean, organizations can. Clubs can the Nom Knights did, but not you know right? they yeah. um or almost they all yeah they almost got there yeah, yeah the Nom Knights and, and all the inf- all the yeah. information to sponsor dog is on the website yeah, everything is there awesome everything's I, there you can email us you can reach out to us we'll get back to you and you know our information is on our you know on our pages and stuff like that so awesome all right man awesome and we're going to talk more about getting you on baggers and brews because i think we got yes i think we have a fan base over there that is super into both dogs and vets so i think Mm -hmm. it's a good match talk about it again over there yeah just in case get it out to as many people as possible yeah let me know i'm I'm up for it awesome i'd love again i'm They'll get mad at me, but <laughs> I'd love to do it before the event. But again, <laughs> we, maybe we got three weeks. We got, we got three, three weeks. weeks. I got to just check my schedule. <laughs> we got three weeks. Oh yeah. man! All right. Uh, my wife's gonna kill me. Well, you did that this, one. You did that one yourself. Yeah, this is a, this was an awesome one, man. This is really cool what you guys are doing. Yeah, I love it. I love how passionate you are about it. Um, all of it, the dogs, the vets, helping people. I love how you guys really are cool. passionate too. Like, yeah, you know. we surprise people now and then. Yeah. We're not just we're working on it. Bad dumb drunks over here. <laughs> we're, whiskey. We're, we're working on it. Yeah. So wrap us up, man. I'm done. Right. You done? I'm done. Are you sure? I'll quit. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, man, Brian. Thank you for coming Thanks, out. Guys. Uh, again, if you haven't heard us say it fifty times on here, Operation Canine Beethoven, located right here in New Jersey. They are going to be at our event July 13th, um, helping us raise money for Tunnel Towers and helping raise money for their own ventures as well. And um, like we were just saying to recap, you want to get involved, hit them up, Operation Canine Beethoven dot com. And um, if you don't really realize or you're having trouble conceptualizing what they're doing, go to their YouTube channel, watch Justin's video. And um, I feel like if, if that doesn't hit you in the stomach, nothing will yeah or even read the testimonials yeah. on the website too yeah but that video that video hits that. hits hard so that video should have more likes yeah it should have more views definitely um i'm gonna share it to our uh to our community as soon as we're done here i'm not done because <laughs> i didn't realize i just forgot if you've only heard about our event through this uh podcast there has been a change in venue yes. in the venue. So um, the event will now begin and end at Fielder's Pub in Hamilton, New Jersey. You can Google it. It's easy to find the address. Um, but 
where it was going to end at the Moose Lodge is no longer. We've, we've changed things. So just so everybody knows, if you weren't going to do the poker run and where you were just going to show up for the event, don't go to Moose Lodge in Mount Holly. Come to Hamilton, New Jersey, Fielder's Pub. I just wanted to get that out there because it's all over our Instagram. But just in case, just in yeah. case you're only listening to this and you were going to come, um, Fielder's Pub, Hamilton, New Jersey, that's where everything's taking place. So the event starts at 11. If you're not doing the ride, come at 11. If you're doing the ride, registration is 9 to 11 at Fielder's Pub. Yep. Now I'm done. Awesome. All right. And that's for the, that's a wrap, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.